There we go. Hey, everybody, this is Perch. I'm here with Joe. How you doing, Joe? I'm all right, Perch. How are you? I'm doing fine. We're here with uh, Ben Templesmith, somebody I've been anxious to talk to for a very long time. How are you? I'm pretty good. <laughs> nice. <laughs> we were just doing the pre-show chat, and now it's like, oh, now we're on. It's like, oh, now I got quiet. I yeah. slipped into my radio voice there as well. It's uh, yeah, it's it's terrible. But uh, no one's actually heard your real voice. That's true. It's all it's all big scam. Yeah, um, he has the best radio voice. Actually. <laughs> it's uh, I. We were saying it before we got started, I, I, I was watching some interviews because I always hate asking the kind of the same questions you've been asked 80 times before. Just I watched the, the dead inside. I don't because you get to answer them in different ways. It's like a game. Well, that's true. It really is. It's that like is you true. can find new angles and think about things for a long time. Well, yeah. I, I was thinking about it when I, when I talked with you, I think it was last year now. I mean, a bunch of time has passed. Um, we, we were just catching up. And uh, I'm, I remember mentioning to you something that it seemed to surprise you. So I'm curious. Uh, I said, uh, the, the constant bit of feedback I have on your art and your style is that it's not safe. It doesn't feel safe. And there's something amazing about that, this art that doesn't feel safe. Do you remember Do you remember that by any chance? No, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I don't, I don't recall that aspect of my art, but uh, that's, that's interesting in that I, I would not want to be safe. Yeah. I don't know what that really means to most. Yeah. I mean, look, everyone's self-perception is different, art is subjective. But uh, I would say not not being safe actually is an asset because yeah, there was yeah. a time when comics used to be cool, and they were cool because you wouldn't want your parents finding out you were reading them and stuff like that. So you know they had an edge to them, and it's like, well, if I'm not safe, it's like mm, maybe 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 don't show your parents. Maybe I'm that cool. <laughs> yeah, you know this this kind of leads me into a question. Just jumping right into it. Uh, so so you're a you're a talented guy. Uh, I disagree, but thank you. Sure. But, um, so I try, you you try, you know, I, I, I enjoy your stuff. I think there's a lot of people that enjoy your stuff. So like, um, why stay in comics? Oh, wow. Well, I mean, I've had some interesting other jobs, but, um, Mm -hmm. uh, that come up, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever impossible to say no to, but I, I never wanted to pursue them, I guess, full time because I like, well, when you say in comics, mm-hmm. that encapsulates a whole bunch of things. It's like yeah, yeah. one thing I'm not, and I, more power to them if that's what you want, mm-hmm. is to be like a lifelong corporate Marvel DC kind of person or all the other couple of larger ones. But, sure, uh, yeah. You know, just a slaves to an editor and, and always hustling for that freelance job, or contract job for whatever, however long it is. Uh, I chose a different path anyway, After certainly after a while. Mm-hmm. But I've done a bit of everything. I've been an exclusive artist at least once in my life. So. There you go. But uh, I like telling stories. And I like, I'm probably stupidly independent and stubborn. So I just like doing things my way. And I like the psych, it's kind of like a psychological, not problem, well, it's problem solving in that what can I do that I like? You know, I, I do my work for me first. So I, I just do what I think I would want to read either now or as a kid. You know, I just think it's because it's fun. So I'm very selfish that way. Mm-hmm. I'm not thinking too much about everyone else, but then I am because I know that if I keep it in the same wheelhouse of what I've already done, people already like that, then they're hopefully going to like the next thing I do. And I try to sell myself rather than each individual project slightly, but you still have to sell each project. But um, no, I mean, I've been, pretty independent and trying to just um i have a i don't know i feel like a i'm not trying to do a sales pitch or anything but like mm-hmm. patreon i have a patreon it's mm-hmm. basically a, fa- a fan club which i try oh. to treat as a fan club where i give people a lot of things it's like a mini i've had a mini kickstarter since at least 2015 now so i've printed a whole bunch of books just for them and slightly to the wider community but it's all you know i, I do it mostly like that and um I've yet to get back into wholesale, the, the direct market and stuff like that, although I have done projects. But, sure. no, I just like the independence. So I'm one of those kinds. I'm not like – I don't have to deal with the politics or the editors and stuff like that. I'm horrible at networking with editors. Any editor I've ever worked with tends to leave the company shortly after. I don't know if it's me. But uh, it's that's true. It's like – If it was, I mean, that would be an interesting Yeah, point. that yeah. would be. Yeah. But um, – yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I do a book for DC, and then oh, great! I've got like s- some people I know at DC. It's like, oh, then they leave. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. Well, that was a fun job anyway. So thanks, guys. 
They liked it, but you know, I'm niche yeah. anyway. I know it. Well, so storyteller, I, your your yeah. your art is extremely unique. I, I love your art. I, I mean, mm -hmm. I've, I've mentioned that before. I absolutely, uh, I did, your style is just is is amazing to me, and I, I've enjoyed everything that you've done. But it, but you're a storyteller. For you, you describe yourself, and you you mentioned this in other interviews too. That you're uh, you describe yourself as a storyteller before you start to describe yourself as an artist. And I think that that seems like there's a there's a point there that. Your, your so in comics, there would be. Yeah, it should be. Yeah. Unless you're yeah. just doing Deadpool pinups. But yeah, sure. comics is literally sequential art, not just. I mean, making the art pretty is really good. But, and I'm not saying I'm a great storyteller by any means, but I like that aspect of it. Laying out a story is probably my favorite part, really, because that's yeah. the, the actual mechanics of it. Whether I get it right, I don't know, but sure. it's a bit I enjoy. So, who do you think. Uh, in the past or, or maybe some inspirations, not necessarily there are <laughs> that question, but yeah, well, might, might as well. Who, who's good at like laying stuff out though. Cause there's a big difference between an artist that pops. That's really popular and an artist that can tell a story. Um, well, I hope he doesn't hate me for saying this, but like you basically asked one of my influences, it, but in a, in a, in a smaller aspect, which is yeah. a, and a very good technical aspect. Mm -hmm. So um, I grew up, Loving Ashley Wood, you know, oh, sure. Ashley, Ashley Wood's art um, when he first broke in. He is responsible for me being in comics because he we came from the exact same city mm -hmm. and he had about an eight years start on me. I, I learned that uh, from the local comic shop that, oh, shit, he, he's suddenly working for Marvel. He's big. But I actually got a, became a fan of him from his locally produced work that very few people have seen before that. Sure. Um, uh, and he's just huge now. Anyway, I mean, he's always, he's a, a seven with the the style of art he has. anything he does turns to gold really so yeah um but one thing i and i it's my only it's not a criticism it's just an observation sorry ash is this something i i never really clicked with his storytelling i didn't think he was a clear storyteller yeah um i'm not saying i am either mm -hmm. but um later on in my slight career uh i i, I started noticing people like you know, um, Mignola, Paul Pope. Mm -hmm. I'm not into the huge old school, forgive me, because I started in the 90s, you know, with my okay. art uh, awareness. Yeah. Like most. But, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah but there's some really good storytellers, <laughs> you know, and, and you can learn a lot just by, I love that aspect because it's, it's really just cinema on paper. And yeah. who doesn't like movies? Well, who doesn't like good cinema? Sure. Yeah. So, like, I'm always watching directors as well. I'm not saying I, any of it rubs off, but, yeah, storytelling is like, that's the craft of comics, not the not the how you over render a leg, you know. Yeah. Honestly, I mean that helps, but I'm sure editors like storytelling as well. So, well, that's <laughs> makes the job. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if it really affects sales too much, but it really helps the overall. I I think it helps keep a line consistent. Like yeah. um, I, I think you saw a lot of that in like the the shooter era. A lot of people talk about that, that he was so, you, you know, focused on, you know, keeping everything consistent and easy to follow where it felt like maybe, maybe you're stunting some of like the, the higher selling titles or like the big blockbuster titles, but you're elevating everything else like that kind of thing. So, hmm. you know, oh, I, I forgot to add um, when I was uh, much younger, <laughs> uh, David Mack, uh, his storytelling. Oh, yeah. Not that it rubbed off on me at all, but it, <laughs> it opened my, because I don't do that style, but it yeah. opened my mind to the possibilities and that just sparked the whole chain reaction. So, I mean, there's so many ways and, and yeah, a lot of, I, th I think too many people just focus on the pretty picture itself, which leads to the popularity of people. But like, I like telling the story. I like the whole, the it, whole. It of, seems to um, migrate people into doing covers as opposed to telling the story. And maybe that's yeah. self-selection. Well, even a cover, a good cover should tell a story. Oh, I, I agree. Yeah. Instead of yeah. being a pinup. Yeah. Well, and pinups are nice, but, you know. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I um, symbolism. I, 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 I've seen a lot of people ask you this, as long as we're getting to the questions you've been asked a million times before. So you start your, you, you, is it, it you're, you're, a lot of people believe your career started with Spawn. Is that true? Do they believe that? Well, like, that's, that's, that's nice. Come on. It kind of did. I mean, it, it really did. It took off from there, but is that true? Is it true that my career started with Spawn? Yeah, I mean, you were doing stuff before then, weren't you? Or, or how, is that, how did, how did the, the, the 
let me rephrase the question. You're really right, technically, but kind of there's, I could have slightly, I technically had like one or two things published just before that. Yeah. But if you mean actually published, I had some fan art and spawn first. So <laughs> I was okay. that on the toilet. So, so um, how do you get, how do you get from kind of starting your career to starting with spawn? Something that, that, uh, you know, is, is certainly a, a notable property, very artistically driven. How, how does that, how does that begin your career? Um, well, it began my working life in comics, I guess. I don't know if it began my, well, I guess I would say it began my career because it was big for me anyway. But um, I, I filled in for Ashley Wood because Ashley Wood left the Hellspawn book with four pages left to do. Yeah. It's only four pages. Isn't it? Strange. Fair enough. I got found on a message board by the art director for T Todd McFarlane Productions at the time, tried out for a different book, but then just landed on the Hellspawn thing. I'm like, yeah, that's where I met Steve Niles. Uh, did that for a fair bit until I don't know what was going on at TMP, but eventually... When the writer left, the editor left. I'm like, you know what? I, I probably should go too. It's like, because ha nothing's happened for six months. So I was like, well, okay, I'll, I'll move on to some other things. But while we were waiting, because the lead time on the Spawn stuff was getting longer and longer of getting approval and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, Steve and I did uh, that little book called 30 Days a Night just because we had some time to kill. And like, hey, I'm just happy to do comics. And I'm, at the time, being paid really well, uh, especially with the exchange rate. People don't realize the exchange rate with Australia was huge at that time. So, <laughs> so I would, I was like, if this is, if this is a comics career, yeah, I'll, I'll be uh, very set for life very soon. It's like, it doesn't, didn't turn out that way, but, but uh, no, so I was, so 30 days technically is probably the biggest and certainly the beginning of my true career in that it gave me a, a platform for mm -hmm. people to hate my work. But, um, but yeah, Spawn definitely started it. I would have happily continued doing Spawn. I love, I love yeah. Spawn. And Todd was always really good to me too. So he gave me nice. my, my true start. So, Oh, but um, I'm probably waffling here because I have had a cup of coffee and I'm pretty jazzed right now. But I did yeah. do a book for DC first that I did 30 pages of and then never saw the light of day because it was shit canned because uh, I was paid. It was fine. I had a kill fee because um, that was when Heidi McDonald uh, left or was asked to leave, whatever, yeah. from DC. So all of her stuff that wasn't already published got, like, nixed. So I, I broke in technically twice. I was doing a little book with – not a little book, a book with Joe Casey. And oh, then, nice. yeah, that never saw the light of day. But then Spawn happened around the same time. So I was – and I was pretty prolific. So I was going to be doing two books at once, and it turned out just to be one. So I That's technically a, broke in twice, but then 30 days. Yeah. That's interesting, too, with, with, uh, with part of her career. career. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I was going to say, I was just interested with Heidi because uh, she was asked to leave right after um, that uh, Why the Last Man w wasn't uh, catching the world on fire or whatever. And, uh, oh, look, uh, I guess that ended up not know, being the case. I think I vaguely remember something about that. But like like I said, as soon as I work with an editor, yep. they're no longer over at the company. So, so I'm a kiss of death. There you go. Uh, There's a bunch of editors I think people listening right now would love you to work with. <laughs> I'm always open. <laughs> Yeah. I'm open to my, I, I, I'm juggling, I juggle projects anyway. Uh, yeah, when yeah. I'm, I have my productive phases and my less than productive phases, but I'm always juggling. I always do more than one thing at a time. So I'm doing like four things right now, slowly. Yeah. But, um, yeah. And, and, um, you know, I'm you're talking, yeah. You, you're talking about, you know, you, you, you like your independence and all that. Uh, were there any times where you were working with like an editor where they just came up with something that just sounded, insane to you and made no sense for the story no i mean editorial would be okay um i'm trying to rack my brain here because this is like mostly stuff from years ago for me now. yeah 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 so yeah. two things two things i will say mm -hmm. uh heidi mcdonald actually was she was my first editorial experience at all and mm -hmm. she actually kind of helped teach me a fair you know just a, the fine tuning of storytelling and a few things like that it's like yeah, yeah. That was really good, and that was my first experience of any of that because I was coming from a place in Australia. We didn't have any conventions at the time. They were like a brand new thing coming up. So yeah. I was this little boy in a bubble, and I was getting – not only was I getting work, but I was being taught things by someone who had experience, which was huge. That was great. That was great. So she was my first editor experience. Mm -hmm. The only other real editor ex – I'm people are pretty hands-off with me, and they – don't have too many critiques. Um, nice. With Scott Alley. 
Well, Scott Alley was my, when I did, after 30 days, I did um, uh, a mini series called Carl McDonald, uh, mm-hmm. some criminal macabre, that's what it was. Yep, yep. And I can't remember what he wanted a, a bunch of little tweaks all the time, which were no problem. I can do them, especially when it, I was an early adopter of the computer with doing some computer stuff. So that was yeah. pretty easy, but it was annoying. Mm-hmm. Sure. <laughs> but I definitely got the feeling he was much more hands on that way, but he never really. I mean, I'm not the writer, so thankfully I don't have yeah. to deal with any of that because I wouldn't want to. But the art wise, it's like, yeah, I can fix that leg, I can fix that armor, I can change sure. the color or move that panel, whatever you want. I can do that bit of that. But yeah, yeah, yeah he, he, was was, he was known for being pretty hands on. So yeah, I got that feeling. So, yeah. but um, uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know where he is now, what he's doing, but. Uh, yeah. Mm. So, <laughs> uh, uh, you you did a, a number of projects with Steve Niles. Having such a consistent kind of writer partner, did that did that help in the beginning? Was that a good way to kind of get your you know get your feet under you as you you, you grew? No, oh, you want the real goss, the real feelings. It's a real in depth interview. Oh, yeah. uh, I should get I should get more deep. Yeah. Well, I, just, I lucked out. You know, meeting Steve on Hellspawn, we just put together. He was already writing it. I think he'd taken over yeah. from Bendis, and then. Yeah. I was just the, the 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 guy that came on after Ash. So um, yeah, then we did thirty days. He actually sent me a pitch. Like, do you want to do something else, like a mini series, while we're waiting for the stuff? Because you know, I'm like, sure, of course. I just had my comic published for the first time. I'm on cloud. You know, I was overjoyed at anything in the world at that point. Life could not have ever been better. So yes, I'm gonna absolutely do anything you want. Uh, money didn't figure into it or publishing. Um, so I said, yeah, yeah, I'll work on something else for you. This is cool. You're a real comics writer. So gave me a pitch list, chose 30 days. I'm probably repeating myself. Um, and he pitched it around cause he had contacts. I had no one. I was just a little kid on, on dial up in Australia. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was the, it was early two thousands. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, we clicked. He liked my work. I liked working with him. It was pretty easy. Sometimes he was very easy. Sometimes. And not with the creator own work, but at least with the Hellspawn, like you'd get times when he'd give you the script and be like, page 16 to 20, fight scene. <laughs> and I guess he'd fill in some writing later. But like, yeah, yeah, it's just like, that's a very easy script to work on. So sure. um, uh, we, stu- we stuck together for a while, um, which I was happy to do, but not because um, I, was, I didn't know anyone or anything at that point in time, and I was still trying to figure out what I wanted to do. So... I realized pretty early on, I do want to tell my own stories. Not that I ever thought I or am a, a great writer. I just like doing an entire project myself, having my voice. So, because most of my stuff is kind of stupid and, and uh, jokey, I would say. I'd, I'd, I'd hope it would be. I, that's I, My bent is to try and have a little humor and stupidity in my, in my work. I'm no Shakespeare. But um, sure. I did realize after a while, it's like it would be smart to either work with other people at some point or delineate myself as a creator, as opposed to just being an adjunct to Steve, mm-hmm. not this to Steve, but, um, it gets a bit, I realized after a while that when people were only going through Steve to talk to me, that maybe I needed to stand on my own two feet a little bit more. Sure. Oh, because yeah. Opportunities there anyway. So, so it's like, you've got us, you know, it's like Dave McKean and uh, Neil Gaiman. It's like at some point they were always a team to me. And then, Obviously, they have their own voices too. So it's like, I love Dave, yeah. I love Neil. So, you know what I mean? So, yeah, no, absolutely. I forget what the yeah. question was. I just went on a rant. No, no that, a that's, ramble, that's good. Uh, yeah, no, it's good. And, uh, you know, uh, speaking of things like, you know, 30 Days of Night, it's uh, going back a little while now. Uh, there's a whole like, new generation of uh, readers out there. Uh, considering the fact that there's not a lot of, uh, stupid quippy jokes and people sitting around eating in, in these comics. Do you think there, it would resonate are, with today's audience? There's a yeah. lot of people sitting around eating, actually. It's there's just, a lot of people sitting around eating, but it's not yeah. that kind of. It's not eating. the kind of eating you want at a no. like, fancy dinner party. It's, yeah, no, we're, we're talking about like having actual recipes in the books, things like that, you know, <laughs> th- things that would resonate with today's readers. Well, uh, here's, sure. the, here's the thing that differentiates that from that, which <laughs> I know is a thing that some people talk about. <laughs> yeah, thirty days a night. Okay, initially it was a three issue miniseries. It was yeah. a it was a story. What I yeah. thought was a one and done story, which went on to some sequels. Because hey, success breeds sequels. Sure. But, sure. Um, the first one is definitely its own story. 
Mm -hmm. It had a story to tell. What you're talking about, forgive me if I'm wrong, mostly mm -hmm. from what I know, is kind of the more monthly, cyclical, cyclical, whatever the word, um, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. properties that are that they have to con constantly come up with, try to come up with vaguely interesting things. Whether sure. you like it or not, mm -hmm. no one's going to give a shit if people in the 30 days, well, they're going to give a shit. They go, why are you having these characters eating and drink, like going to a birthday party for each other in this comic? It's got nothing <laughs> to do with the overall comic for 30 days. <laughs> but if I've got a 50-year-old yeah. character that I have to put a thing out every month, it's like, I can understand that. Yeah. I wouldn't find it interesting myself. Yeah. Uh, probably to draw, especially. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Steve, fun, but... Steve he... Dillon used to be able to write like a damn good diner scene if, <laughs> if you had to give it to him. You know, they, they can have a real point and a real purpose yeah. if it's in a story. Yeah. I mean, diner, diner scenes in movies, you know, in sure, yeah. all sorts of things, they, they can work. But when you have any constantly reinvent, uh, uh, I'm not going to call them tired, but very old properties and constantly keep them, you know, adding new things. And, like, I understand kids. I'm not, I'm, I don't know how old you guys are, but I'm, yes, I'm not young anymore. I'm, mm -hmm. yes. I'm but I'm, I'm not the youngest generation. But I'm not, I'm the middle generation. I'm not like the old, well, I'll never be a, I'll never be one of the higher up old, old uh, giants of the industry. But, um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's definitely, storytelling and not storytelling i guess but the the content itself is is changing a bit i don't know if people really like that or they, if yeah. they want that or if it's just the way things are morphing with culture i don't know i make no claim but i probably won't have birthday parties for my characters terribly. well if you could go back would you you know go do it over again or, or relaunch some of that stuff how would you incorporate social media into it would everyone be looking at their phone oh, tweeting i put i put phones in my stuff a little bit yeah, yeah, yeah. but um you got to try and mostly ignore that in, in a, to a degree. In, yeah. with, with all co with all media now, most stories are spoiled by social media and cell phones. Yeah. It's like if you if you're kidnapped or something. Well, I mean, okay, you have to have characters somehow lose their phone <laughs> for a sure. story to ever make sense for anything to. Otherwise, they'll be found easily. Well, like I don't know. It's like everything gets complicated because everyone's so well connected now. Nothing can happen yeah. easily unless you take away the technology. Yeah, It'll make the story interesting. So. That's good. That's a good future sequel to Thirty Days a Night, where the you know problems seem to be coming, but the the residents are very easy, easily able to connect. Well, I, I do have a sequel in yeah. mind it's called 30, 30 Days of Night Bad Reception. Yeah. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah. Satellite goes down, but they I mean, they could get some solar lamps from Amazon delivered, and then it just solves the whole problem. And it's a very or or what if a birthday party? They could be tricking kids into getting together, like at those like Pokemon gyms, while they're Ooh, playing yeah. Pokemon Go, and then they're all together, and then they just murder them yeah. all. This is a yeah. this is a killer idea. Yeah, absolutely, it, it is a killer idea. Yeah. It, it's it, it's just crazy to me. Like social media is so corporate now, and so mm -hmm. influencing you know, with advertising and whatnot. And so now the very products that we're already trying to sell you now incorporate the social media that feeds the beast in the first. It's like, I don't know. I don't know. I, I would, yeah. I'm not going to make like a fake account on, on social media for uh, my characters or anything like that. So it's, I'll just tell stories, but not, not ones that uh, go for 50 years. I'll just, you know, one and done's mini series. Series of yeah. miniseries, maybe at the most. So, does it uh, does it ever? So, I, I of course, and I, I know you. You, I'm, I'm sure you've been told this a million times. I, I, I love Thirty Days a Night. I liked it was the right comic, at the right time. It, it definitely was a, it was a, a nice shock. I think there were a lot of very, uh, well, I'll use that word again. Very complete accident. Hmm? Complete accident. A lot of people turned it down when it, Steve pitched it, as he told me. Dark Horse turned it down. Thank you, Dark Horse. Yeah, okay. Only IDW picked it up, so it was their first actual normal format comic and it was a big hit for them i mean it helped put them on the map to some extent uh let's be uh, let's be honest it did put them on the map okay they had a, a couple of art art book type prestige format kind of things from ash because uh ash knew the boss or ted adams at, at idw at the time so they had a little playground that they he could go he, he could play in sort of that way artistically um yeah but 30 days a night was their first regular kind of comics, as far as I know. Before that, they were doing UGO. They were yeah. doing all sorts of creative services. Yeah, yeah, just like yeah. Then they swapped to the publishing, and then every other um, property on Steve's pitch list that he gave me, like, hey, do you want to do this one, this one, this one? 
uh, he ended up turning into a comic. I didn't do any of them. He, there were other artists, but they, they were convinced early on that every comic they did could get a movie deal the same way and bring in that sort of level of interest and income yeah. the way 30 Days did. Did not turn out the case. A lot of them did get optioned, but um, sure. yeah. And they've long since morphed into something I have no idea about that's very corporate. But, but yeah, no, we put them on the map and then we, I'm not going to claim it was only us, but we did help revitalize horror comics that way with that book. So. Oh, 100%. It was pretty Walking Dead. Yeah. I mean, Walking Dead shot it through the roof, but. It, it, yeah. it, no, it, it definitely, I think, was. I mean, the comic industry is in a weird place at that point. In the early 2000s, it was. Uh, I, I think people were trying to find themselves after the the you know newsstand was gone at this point, and the, the problems of the 90s got everybody confused. So I mean, it was it was kind of a it was a place where everybody was playing it very very careful. And this comic comes out; it was a, a good shock to the system. But I, I see people um, ask you in other interviews; they'll say things like, uh, "So uh, has your style evolved from 30 Days of Night?" And I always laugh because this this was almost twenty years ago now. I, I yeah, thanks for reminding me of how old I. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I was like twenty three, twenty four when I did that, and I'm. Your style's evolved all, the, all over the place. Like it's yeah. it's your your style is uh, like you've you've advanced a lot of things. It, it feels does it ever? I, I'm trying to ask this question without poking you too hard, but does it bother oh, you? I like it? It. Yeah. But people are, are they, they want to take you back to one of the first things you did uh, every time. Does that does it ever kind of get on your nerves a bit? I've, I've talked to some interviewers about this in a certain way. Uh, mm-hmm. So if you met Steven Spielberg or Tarantino's or, well, any famous director or write, well, maybe not writers because some writers actually, novelists, only write one book in their entire life if it's a huge thing. So, But um, some of them don't ever claim to be a fan of someone and then ask them about their earliest work <laughs> as if you've never heard of anything they've, not even the most current thing they've done, but it, their, their other body of work. It's like if you only know that one thing, which was the most mainstream, big thing that you're likely to ever easily have seen, it's like, well, you're not actually a fan. You just consumed. That was fine. And you yeah. can ask me about it. But, but yeah, that, that was a long time ago. And hopefully I've changed. Maybe for the better, I don't know. But yeah. you learn. Hopefully, you, if you're not learning, and if you if you still look the same as an artist twenty years later, then that's probably not a good thing. You no. can't either change and evolve, no. or until I get too old and I'm on the downward slope. But um, no, it's like you had massive change in the first. I mean, in just the first ten years of your career, your 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 style all shifted. That your storytelling techniques, you you clearly see some advancement. You're doing. Oh, thanks, man. I mean, I, I think there was lots of things, but it, I I do. And I don't know if it's laughing at your expense or not, but I see this question, oh, that, but it's like, so I, I'm a huge fan of all your work in particular, this one thing that was at the very start. And I don't really, that's all the questions I have for you. I just, I, I, I this happens to other people as well. You mentioned Steven Spielberg, but I, I, I've seen this come up from time to time. It's yeah, I'm sure it's a little bit like with Chris Claremont. It's like, you wrote the dark Phoenix on here. It's like, I I was very conscious. Here's a a weird thing. I was very conscious early on in that my first real full comic, because I I call it the full comic because it had a beginning, middle, and end. Spawn did not. It was just like, okay, I did five issues or whatever it was. Sure. But um, So that was like my first chunk of a finished thing. Mm -hmm. And that became, you know, it got a huge amount of attention for, uh, at the time, huge film option, which was rarer then. Not now. But... um, uh, I knew that probably wouldn't happen again. I mean, I didn't expect it the first time. I just was happy to do the comic and, and get paid at all. So, or have it be published. But um, where was I going with that? Um, oh, uh, I had the mentality, because Gary Coleman, for some reason, I think was in the news at that time, the, the Different Strokes actor who's now dead. Mm-hmm. Which is a big thing. He's like, I don't want to be like that child actor kind where you have a huge success when you're young or early and then... You only ever have that to live on the, the the little vestige of fame you may have or notoriety or from that one thing for the rest of your life and trade on that because I've you see those sort of people at cons yes um, celebrity I'm not going to name names I'm not going to say anyone but it's okay. like yeah you were great in that thing twenty years ago but do you have another a whole did that lead to a career of other things because it's really sad and I don't know if it 
it must plague people in their minds. And I didn't want to be one of those embittered old people that say, don't ever ask me about 30 days because I'm done with that. I don't want to like have the love hate relationship that way. So sure. I appreciate all my work. I'm happy with what I do now. I know yeah. I'll never have the success that that thing had. That was a lightning in a bottle moment for a lot of things. So, well, but, but, um, I, mean, I might, but I'm not thankful. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it, it uh, it was the right product for the right time. I mean, I think it was successful. It was, again, successful because it was a very unique project. It did look like the people who worked on it cared. And yeah. it's, it's strange. I've tried to quantify that. And, like, when you pick something up and you just you get a sense that people actually do care about the thing that they created. You don't always get that feeling as the reader. Um, I think it had a lot of young energy at the time. And here's the thing. I'm not involved with 30 Days a Night at all anymore. So it's, it's like it's, if it's a baby, I gave it up for adoption long ago. So yeah. it's the same thing now. And I probably disagree with most of what's happened with it, but it's, I have the book I did. I don't care. No one can take that away from me. Sure. So I'm happy. And I have a whole nother career because of that. So I'm thankful for it. But at the same time, I have that career. So I'm not like looking back at it going, ah, you know, I'm owed this or blah, blah, blah. Sure. Does that make sense? I don't know. It, no, it completely yeah. does. It's, I try to be mentally healthy about that stuff. I, it's it's a it's a strange balance. I I, I like the way you you describe that because it feels like there, there's people who just kind of live that one success and that's it. And I I, I know I you know without naming names, it is the people you see at the cons or in the the one alley that's kind of apart from the rest of it. And it's like, hey, here's this hall of mm -hmm. people who had this one thing. Mm -hmm. um, it, it matters in comics in in general in regards to a lot of people come up and get really big for a minute. And then suddenly they're yesterday's news. I mean, comics is relatively ageist that way, or it's big about the new yeah. hot name. And then, then they're kind of gone the next day. So yeah. I'm very thankful that I'm never a big name, but I am me and I make that work and I've had a career. So I hope to be more like a, I'm not going to say anything quality wise because he's way more better than me, but like someone like Sam Keith is like sure. drop a book and it's Sam Keith and, He'll have fans. He'll have an audience for that no matter what because it's Sam Keith. He's cultivated a thing, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't want to be like that versus like the new Flash Hot writer that wrote for a couple of years on some company stuff and then disappeared because no one – I don't know internal workings of companies and editors. I don't deal with it. Sure. So I don't know how they do or don't get work anymore. I don't understand that. I don't ever want to have that. So. Uh, those, those people also don't know how uh, they get work and continued work. And it's been fun the past few years seeing some of these people realize that uh, in real time on no, social I, media. Uh, I know. I've, I've seen a little of it on social media and stuff. Yeah. Like that. That's a tough thing. To, to, it would send some people. It would break people, I think. I don't yeah. know. Especially if you have an ego about you in a sense of you believe your own shit. It's, oh, I, I did for a brief moment. I, you know, when you're meeting movie stars and having a fucking, uh, forgive my swearing, you know, a, a, a premiere of, of the movie based on your book and you're seeing a billboard with, with a, with art on it. That is, it wasn't literally my art, which would have blown my mind, but it, sure. I can understand. All right. If you're a celebrity of any kind or have any, you're riding high in a career that way. And you see a building that literally has painted on it a picture of you. I mean, mm -hmm. a picture of a thing you did is one thing, but literally the picture of you, if it's mm -hmm. like trying to sell you as an actual celebrity, mm -hmm. like Stan Lee or someone even in comics. Sure. That would send you over the edge into insanity, potentially, egomania-wise. It's like, oh, yeah. I'm down from that later on to be treated like yesterday's news would be, yeah. So I've always tried to be mindful of that in that mm -hmm. I'm, I'd rather be a self-depreciative person first it's an australian thing too you don't if you believe in your own success if you think you're great you're kind of considered an asshole in australia sure <laughs> so, like, so, like, yeah. so like if you got like an eight page care bears back up in a comic you wouldn't be tweeting about it and going crazy about how it's the greatest thing is uh we oh, tweet about it i want to let people know but i wouldn't yeah, that's... And I would yeah. agree to do that because I'm assuming they'd want me to have them have, you know, severe diarrhea or something like yes. that. I would yeah. fuck that shit up, put it that way. I, I would love, love to see... I would love the wrong to see an eight-page <laughs> story. That is the best idea we've had all day. Yeah, no, that... that yeah, I let's make it happen if I'd, you're listening, I'd, IDW. I would always joke that I, you need to do a My Little Pony Aliens crossover comic. Mm -hmm. And then they kind of eventually did, so I couldn't do that joke anymore. And like, and I, But I did just think that one was kind of sad. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of crossovers like that. So, yeah. no, I, I uh, okay, yeah, I, I have this this great desire to see you do a Care Bears story now. Um, 
I'll just do my own kind of care bear thing. There you go. Hey, there will be yeah. complete assholes. I don't know. Sure. I, they, uh, you got attached to to horror. I mean, because of Thirty Days of Night uh, being this, yeah. this guy who can really create these these horror worlds. But you've done noir. You've done a lot of. You've done sci fi. I mean, is there a? This again sounds like a very corporate question, but is there is there a? You can ask the I don't know. A lot of people listening to this may not ter- be terribly aware of my work or what yeah. I am. So it's okay. Yeah, yeah there you go. But plus, this is a more full interview conversation, which is much different to the things at cons where they just have five generic questions and they yeah. want a quick line, you know? So it's, yeah. like, it's a wonder- wonderful thing to get to explain actual in-depth, slightly, things. Yeah. No, I just, I just like atmospheric stuff. I draw the way I draw now. It's like it's relatively set. I can't suddenly do anime, although I'd like to try, because uh, or the manga style, because <laughs> that, that would be easier um, mm-hmm. and popular. Um, I just like dark things, dark science fiction, and uh, darker things in life anyway. They always make for interesting stories. Yeah. I, I'm Australian, so I apologize. I never really got into Superman. Like, I'm not into the whole really bright, candy-colored, truth and justice sort of like yeah the best of us it's like i'm more into i was always more you know the punisher the hell the uh, uh ghost rider and mm-hmm. you know stuff like the darker stuff sure it still has lessons in it moral lessons and whatnot yeah. but like yeah and captain and then, america i'm well i'm australian so i never was why is there a captain at least a lieutenant australia that was when i was a kid that's done this. <laughs> yeah i like this is fine i like them fine but yeah, I'm this culturally is slightly is- different you're on the other side of the equator, so that's probably why it's reversed. I'm on the you. correct side. Well, I'm not now. No, I'm yeah. on the correct side of the yeah. equator. Yeah. You know yeah. that they're up and down in space. There's no north and south. Australia's actually probably on top. It's yeah. true. Yeah, take mm-hmm. that. It's America. just planes, man. Planes. <laughs> <laughs> the, the atmosphere, is, you mentioned the, uh, the, the art. I mean, one of the things that, that I enjoy uh, in reading your work, um, and this came out in Choker, a couple other of the titles, is you... I mean, the characters are fine, but you do create. It looks like you're putting a lot of work into the full page, uh, the, the the backgrounds and the the. I, yeah. <laughs> you, like, you were pos- I, I love you. I appreciate you. I think you're the first person to say I put a lot of work into my backgrounds. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> you're at least fooling me. I try there. not to. Yes, but I do. Yes. No, you, you create a mood with your page. I mean, it 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 reads like it, it's immersive. It's, it reads like something that's going to draw you in. And I think it's, oh, it's not just the main character. It's the whole thing. That, uh, that, obviously I was going to try and do that. That's the job. Um, yeah. The job is to have you flow through the story and feel it. If you can feel it even better than just looking at it and understanding it, if you feel it, but um, a background, yes, I'm pretty crap at backgrounds. Let's be honest, but I, I like fancy lighting and some computery things and shadows and, if you can get away with shadowing everything, then you don't have to draw anything. But yeah. um, you could spend all day drawing a cityscape in the background for one panel, and the reader is only going to glance at that and then move on. Mm-hmm. So you want them to have the idea it's there and then just move on with hopefully what's a good story. What well, is a good story? So, but it's it's not just a nudge. I mean, if it's uh, if your scene is is cold, if there's snow and or you're in the middle of a blizzard, it feels cold. It it I, I, again this, this sounds very strange and like it's uh, it's maybe no, it doesn't. It's exactly what I try to go to, man. Yeah. It's um, putting the atmosphere and the feeling in. To yeah. I mean, that's honestly, I guess, if anything, I'm an artist. I try to feel what I'm doing rather than be a draftsman about it sort of thing and just being very technical. I, I, I'm i probably very sloppy in the technical aspect of that. So I'm much more, I want you to feel this if I can help it. And I lucked out in learning Photoshop early on before it was a thing. This is long before tablets and stuff. So yeah, I learned how to use it a bit and figured out a few things and yeah, made it work and it looked okay on the printed page. No, I definitely want to ask you about digital and kind of that, that world, but, but it is, to press point one more step, it's it's that uh, I, I know artists that will spend a day rendering a very detailed scene of Brooklyn, and it looks very accurate. If you were to print that page yeah. out on the wall, it's like, oh, it's a good architectural drawing. Uh, but to your point, the reader tends to gloss over that stuff. I mean, they they they're they're busy with the action, whereas what you're doing is creating the mood of that setting, so you can feel that setting. I'm and trying. It seems to be more powerful and stick with people better. Well, I mean, that's subjective. I appreciate sure, you. Sure, sure. Um, yeah. here's, here's the other thing. You, the other, you, you would know there's other factors involved in why artists draw what they draw sometimes. 
one of them at least used to be before everything was computer, is an artist will be thinking, maybe I can sell this page. So if right. I make it a, and that's why a lot of artists like pinups. It's like, well, if I make this a fancy, nice thing, you know, yeah, I'll get some more money on the back end from something yes. else. So um, no, I never think about that. I, I just, I do have original work. So I'm like inking a page right now, but it's only nice. small. It's just process work to me. The, the final is the computer finished bit with coloring and added elements. But yeah, I only consider this process work generally. Although I, I'm putting more work into the real parts now with more detail, but that's just because it's the way I want to go with like, oh, I don't want to, it used to annoy me when people would say my style was sketchy. Yeah. But when you know, when you spend eight hours on a page and they still call it sketchy, it's like, well, I, I guess that's because I some of the lines don't connect and and there's some splatter in there. Like it's it's a visual vocabulary that not everyone has. They use words to describe things, but like I like being sketchy. Then if it wasn't actually sketchy, I might be slightly annoyed. Because yeah. eight hours later, it's more than a sketch. But um, <laughs> I don't know. It's like, yeah. Um, so you're you're uh, you're you're working digitally then. I mean, oh, about twenty percent digitally, I'd say. About twenty percent, eighty percent real real world. I still draw by hand. So, so tell me about that. Just just so you're you're you're, you're drawing it out, but you're sketching. <laughs> you're drawing it out by hand. I sketch uh, it first. Yes. Yes. And then your, your I mean, because part of your, your work that's so powerful is the coloring and the aspect of, of kind of how that whole page comes together. What's what's that process look like? Uh, a lot of Red Bull. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, when, I, when I'm doing it for myself, I just, uh, I draw layouts of the whole book first. So I know the storytelling aspect of it. And I already have like a bit of the script or the dialogue written down. I always do it with dialogue first. I learned that from one else. Very I nice. like knowing what someone's saying so you can put um, expressions into them rather than do it after the fact, like the Stan Lee method, which, which doesn't really... I mean, would you do that with a movie? Would you have the actors, like... You yeah, have one strange movie. ...having expressions without knowing what they're actually in, going to actually say in the end? It doesn't really... Yeah, so I like having... It's the Marvel Universe, yeah. Because when you're the artist, you're, you're actually, you're the art director, you're the costume designer, you're the actor, you're everything. So I, I like, ex I'm not saying I'm good again, but I like expressions. I like knowing how to make them work from the panel to panel, especially with timing and a certain, in certain scenes can work really well that way. If you already know what, you know, the characters are saying to let them breathe or skip or whatever. Um, Forget what the overall question was, but um, <laughs> yeah, how did I do it? <laughs> so lots of Red Bull. You're 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 drawing, and then you're getting into the machine. You you talk yeah, about layouts, and then I just um, I work on letter size paper, which uh -huh. um, oh, that's which interesting. Is good for speed, hmm. but I also add a lot of detail at that level, so I get away with it. I hope, I think. Um, yeah. I, I learned like Charlie Adlard on The Walking Dead actually works really small as well. So yes. it's like it's a pure efficiency thing. The only reason you should be working large, like eleven by seventeen, yes, makes nice art for a wall maybe yes. to sell but it is because you know you don't have to put too much detail in but you are drawing bigger but then it shrinks down and gets nice and tight but so i i'm my stuff is still shrunk a little but not that much yeah. so but it, uh, it lets me finish things a little quicker mm -hmm. especially considering i then ink and paint it all myself as well it, physically before i then scan it oh it's all usually grayscale and i scan it in the computer and then i bit of dodge and burn colors um I don't really like use filters too much, but I mm -hmm. like lighting. But the thing is, when you know what you can do on the computer after you scan the artwork in, that affects how you approach the original art in the first place. So you know you can play your strengths and stuff. So, so, so if people ask me, oh, can you, like, they'll come to me at a con and say, like, oh, you know, because they see commission prices and whatnot. It's like, oh, I don't want to fully finish thing. Can you just do a pencil thing or just an ink thing? It's like, well, actually, I'm kind of lost slightly in that, and that might actually be more work mm. because I'm working to make that a finished product as opposed to doing what I do, knowing that I'll finish it off in paint where I can add certain things and effects that way. So it's like a whole rejigging of the, of the process that actually is worse <laughs> than if I just give you the way I'd normally do it. So does yeah, that make any sense. sense? Yeah, no, it makes complete sense. I, I, uh, and now here's here's the nerdy question. Uh, so if, if if you're early on on Photoshop, how have you liked their move to uh, Creative Cloud and and uh, and having oh, the software done that way? You saw my tweets. 
No, no, I actually haven't. I, I'm curious. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I had two versions of Photoshop in my life. I had like, I forget what the first one was, obviously very early. I actually knew a guy that used to work uh, at Photoshop. He gave me free copies. Like, yeah. they wanted feedback. Like, they literally, he, his job was to, like, find out what um, what creative people thought about it. It was almost like a comic artist, a working artist, matted yeah. to Adobe. It was, it was amazing. Um, if you have those early versions of the software and you go to the special thanks to, you'll you'll find me in there, actually. <laughs> I'll do that now. Believe um, it or not. <laughs> um, that's cool, actually. Yeah. But um, so I, I, I was using the same version of Photoshop for a decade, at least a decade, yep. um, and I never upgraded my my computer after a while out of fear that it would stop working. But then yes. my computer died on me late last year, mm -hmm. and I got a new computer. It was backed up, time machine, all of that. So I had everything back, except it wanted to reauthorize. And you're a tech person. I have no idea about this shit, but it's Mac. Yeah, but um. I couldn't get anything reauthorized of my old faithful programs that worked like a charm that yeah. had everything I needed to do in it. And I don't need new bells and whistles. So I was forced to sign up for the new Adobe Photoshop. And it's, uh, it's a lot of needless crap. I don't use, I'm sure some people use it. That's nice. But yeah. it also crashes a lot and has glitches and things on basic things that I used to easily do. It's insane. Yep. And now I pay uh, yeah. 50 bucks a month for this. Uh, I'm looking to transition to something, a couple other programs. Uh, I forget what one's called, Affinity. Yeah, might be. One. I'm going to look at trying to use those in the future. But it's a long, long task to try and swap completely over when you've definitely got to still produce work at a yeah. rate. So, yeah, people. Yeah. Uh, People hate Adobe uh, <laughs> over the past uh, few years. It's been ve very vocal uh, yes. about uh, not liking it. And Adobe's done very little in terms hmm. of remedying any of that ill will. <laughs> well, it's, the, it's, the, it's the dark side of capitalism. Is yeah. Why do we have to sell you a one-time solution when we could sell you a... Sure. You know, why, why, could, why should we give you a cure when we can give you a patch job? You know, a constant yeah. updated patch job. Oh, yeah, this will not work for the... Gets into the whole COVID situation, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. But um, it's uh, this is amazing. So I, it's, this is going to be an amazing segue because it all fits. But uh, um, no, I I, I, I suspected because uh, I've I've got a machine over here that is still using. I, I'm, it's got to be a version of Photoshop from ten years ago, and I won't. I, I'm just desperately hoping that machine holds on. I do not. I, I don't want to upgrade. But on all the other machines, I've got Creative Cloud. It's a pain. Yeah, because you uh, know, like they've turned off all the, the old, whatever they call them, the authorization servers or something yep. that will ping back to with your serial. You, can't, you just can't yeah. do it anymore. It's yeah. like, excuse me, I paid for that. And I would happily pay $900 for a working copy of yes. even a new one. Just keep it like that. I don't want to be subscribing. I don't want to... I don't know. Know the new features, they're, they're a mess. Um, but no, it's it's so... It's a new reality for a lot of artists, unfortunately. So it is, uh, but you hit upon it. It is this uh, this desire to hit a business model where you're renting it, where it's a subscription, yeah. rather than just paying it. So, which Extreme. comics is going through now? I mean, well, with the online, with the DVD. yeah, we're we're in that. I mean, it's we're in the same place where the companies. You know, the, one reason why digital hasn't quite you know, caught on here is there's still a lot of collectors in other places. But if you look in other regions, I mean, Japan is rapidly moving to this, you know, and it's a good deal uh, to be a subscriber to, to jump, but you are still renting it monthly. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's a way to get the money regardless. And, they, and they will still, I mean, you tell me, um, yeah. they will still produce physical versions or collections maybe, right? They will. Yeah. Because, for a while. I mean, you kind of well, wonder though. I think people will always want artifacts of some yeah. kind. If they if they really love something, if they get and with storytelling with media like this, entertainment media, people yeah. fall in love with things. Ideally, if it's yes. good, yeah. and that's why they get very attached to things. So they will want a, a physical hard copy because books will never die. They they might become rarer and less trendy, but there'll always be people that want a physical. There's there's it's true. The one thing that I, I I'm trying to espoused to a lot of people now it's like especially with everything online it's all about the experience we're not actually i'm an artist yes I, I make comics yes but i'm not actually selling that i'm selling if i'm any good and that's debatable i'm selling an experience and hopefully a unique experience that only i can give 
Yes. So I do that on like my Patreon. So like, yes, they see digitally every page. They see the whole process. Again, I'm not trying to sell people to go in there, but uh, <laughs> yeah, Temple Smith on Patreon. Um, Which is a subscription service. Yeah, yeah. But the people at the right tier, I print the comic for them and I give them a special sign and yeah. number, numbered edition. Uh, with This, again, sounds like selling. But I give them like yeah. prints and a sticker as well in a wax sealed envelope with with uh, custom stamps on it and stuff like that. And I sign everything. And it's like, I want to have an experience with them, a relationship with them in that way that can't be replicated. If you just went and bought a comic in a store, let alone just yeah. saw it online. So yeah. does that, does that make sense? Like that's the, yeah. the, the way the money is, I would say in the future, mm-hmm. especially where you can only have, we're not, it's the only area that we have an edge over the large corporations, I'd say. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah, they're going to have a very hard time adapting to that. Marvel and DC, the big guys are, are they will make their way to digital at some point and figure out a way to to get people to consume. So maybe, and they'll, they'll, I think they'll still have printed media. People do like it. I, I, I definitely agree that people are going to have a hard time for that, for that to happen. You'll have to get the comics people out of the way if you actually yeah. want to make it popular. You'll actually have to get some actual business people. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's, that is true. Isn't isn't most of digital comics on Comicsology? Yes. So it's just the direct market all over again. Yeah, <laughs> it, it is. There's it's all channeled through one thing, one distribution channel, and in this case, that thing is Amazon. So yeah, which is Amazon. Yeah, yeah. 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 But but there is that. Um, what was it? Uh, we, we you covered it earlier this uh, week, or what was it? Uh, last week with uh, Cacao yeah. uh, purchasing Tapas because the the other area that's really burgeoning now is. Um, Line Webtoon, Tapas, yeah. and there's some other companies that are, um, you know, setting themselves up to just devour uh, Western comics. Uh, I, I mean, that sale, it was, what, half a billion dollars they paid for yeah. for Tapas? It's crazy. Like, it shows that the people want to put the money into these uh, free or subscription-based web comics that are designed for cell phones. Well, aren't most of them free? I know a lot of tapas. I mean, I guess they have some premium stuff too. But I did some work yeah. with with line tunes. I still yeah. like it. Yeah, a lot of it. But I don't like their format too much. But yeah, it's it's free. But there's, you're starting to see more and more. Um, it's free, but if you want to be up to date with everyone else, you have to pay, or you're going to have to wait x amount of weeks to yeah. read it for free. Or <laughs> I do too. Uh-huh. Yeah. Or <laughs> it's uh, you know it's free for six chapters, and then after that, you got to pay f- like. Uh, Quarter or whatever it is for every chapter of the they they the the drug dealer does that man yeah yeah <laughs> exactly it's the heroin business all over again exactly. I, but but but, you, but, you, but here's one thing and I know you probably covered it in the video anyway yeah. but, um, their market their re, their audience base is is huge compared yeah. to the Western world ideally mm. I mean I don't know how many people you think regularly read Western comics when I say okay I'll say Anglo comics Anglo meaning English language. Uh, like to differentiate it from the French because French, yes. uh, it's its own thing, it's me. a whole different beast, yeah. And they're very French about it, so yes. But we, I think we're, we're tiny compared to that overall market base. So, yeah. I, I, it, it would be if I could find a way to keep living in that ecosystem if they popularized sequential storytelling mm-hmm. in the Western world the way they already have it in Japan and places like you know, in uh, uh, Korea, I guess it is. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's only a good thing for everyone, regardless of your art style and your thing. But the thing they do is they offer different genres, and they're not hooked up to just. I mean, maybe some of them are, but pushing fifty-year-old corporate property. Correct me if I'm wrong. Like there's yeah. very little uh, that that's that old, but it is. Um, they they never get so dependent on that one thing. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. That it drives everything else. Yeah, they're actually just stories. Yeah, they may be really long stories. But and I, I, you could tell me if the creators of those original stories, maybe not historically, but at least the more modern ones, if they if they actually share ownership in them, or if it's still a, if it's the company owns everything, I don't know. No, there's there's usually shared ownership. There's okay, there's, so there's there. impetus there, and the, there's investment yeah. there, as opposed to Marvel or DC necessarily. Where yes, you can make a nice thing, and you might get a little bit, but you know who really owns it. Well, yeah, I, it's a whole different think, dynamic, is what I'm saying, and I don't mind it necessarily. I think it could be a good thing, but I would still be scared. <laughs> Culturally, I think there's also a. I, I, I've heard this from a number of the creators there that they, and I think it fits something that I've seen you say as well. Is they do think about the end at the beginning. 
there is this, yeah. this you know, they, they're, everybody who's going into this, including the, the manga has been running for a long time, and Oda and some of these others, they, they know their end. And That's they healthy. see that as really important. <laughs> yeah, because it, it makes it like an actual story, not yes. just a... I mean, comic, you know, the comics used to just be... They, they were just a monthly thing, periodical, mm -hmm. like keep it going to sell, to push the ads. Right. Like, it was all about ad revenue, wasn't it? So it's like the whole dynamic is changing anyway. Yes. Man, we, yeah, I like telling stories for st yeah. with an ending, even if it's a bad ending, at least it m should come to an end. So I think it's, it's much tougher to not do it that way. So it's one of the areas that when I, that I always hear that people um, one of the misunderstandings between the two cultures is it will be the uh, well yeah but if the story was popular if it, if it you know if the characters really take off and you make a lot of money then you'd want to keep it going and uh, the, the 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 creators in, in Japan tend to have more of an attitude of no I'll create a new story because I've proven yeah. I'm popular. And I can create stories, so I would create a new story. I don't understand yeah. this keep it going thing. So. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's just it's a. There's so many differences that are potentially advantageous and different, but I don't know. It's a that's a whole thing, man. You you talk to a lot of people about that, I'm sure. But well, yeah. I, I I do. You, it's it's not. A, it's actually fascinating to me. So your Patreon and this product yeah. that you give people. So you are. But I mean, this is where I think you've you've stumbled or not stumbled across. But you you you're doing something smart. You you there's a digital product. People are subscribing to it, but it's the experience. It's you're you're providing somebody a physical good and the digital good and the experience of you and these extra things you're adding. I mean, there is there's a that to me feels like the the, the future here for for at least the West of well, you know, it should be in a, in a way, but it's sad as well because. Well, I know that what made me able to do that was still the larger system in the first place that made me known to a bunch of people. You still need a larger sphere to promote to something to, to get a reputation enough. It's like, yeah. I don't know if, if I just came on just doing it now, I'd have that sort of growth. And I mean, it, that it would yeah. take years to get to that point. And luckily I have put years into it anyway, but yeah, I don't know the dynamics have come coming up now would be the same as when I did it initially. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, Patreon, which is just a fan club to me, it's, I, that's the way I treat it, is um, it works best when you already have an established audience. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, like, you, like with, you, with your channel, it's like consistency matters. If you keep doing it, and I've, I've made like five projects and physical books through it now with a few more to come. But, um, yeah, that matters. And that, so that builds and builds and then people come back and that's i don't know yeah you know how that works no I, absolutely i've seen Gaining so trust. so many uh artist patreons who and they set it up where they're consistent for a couple months and then they start slipping 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 they shed support and they close it down it happens all the time yeah so, uh, or they do it or they they close it i mean they shutter it for at least a while maybe yeah when they've got a another project going on and it's mm -hmm. like no, no no i'll keep doing stuff the, the trick with, uh, I'm just going to call it a fan club of any kind. You can do it through mailing list. I don't know. Sure, sure. sure. All you, sorts can of, it, right? you can have your own membership website these days. You can do all sorts of things. It's if you were going to do the project anyway, then nothing can hurt you. I mean, obviously, you need to have some income anyway if, if it, it's for free at that point. But if you were going to do it anyway, the consistency is already there because you were going to do it and you just, you, so you have all this stuff to show anyway. So I don't do it thinking, oh, I'll only do this if I get 100 people backing me or I'll, mm -hmm. it's like, no, I'm committed to this anyway. I'm doing it because I have plans, ideally, <laughs> for other revenue streams for the thing I ultimately finish. Sure. So it's, it's just a thing, it's, this, it's a whole life cycle for me now. And if, if I do take on like a, a bigger contract money job or something, say Marvel DC, not that Marvel ever will, call me up and say, hey, we want you to do this thing. It's like, okay, but I will still have, I, I consider it essential to still have other things going on mm -hmm. because they've bought, they've bought me for that time for that project, but they haven't right. bought me overall. And I have to consider myself, not just, not just their corporate product, yeah. which sounds bad, but it's like, no, no, you, I'll do your project. <laughs> you, you can't let your, your own stuff because a uh, die at the same time is doing a big project. So. But it's something that's exciting, I think, yeah, yeah. In, the, in the market where, because um, you see some of the creators who've had this project, and I think they get this assumption that 
the big corporation is going to take care of them personally forever. Like they're part of a family now, as opposed to being put on a project. So like six months later, the project's over and you see a lot of confusion yeah. with people. Oh, right? you're, hitting, what happened? You're, you're hitting me in my tender bits. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the one thing, the harshest thing I've ever learned in common, it's not just comics, it's life. It is life, yeah. But in comics, in the nature of comics, is if you have a personal project, a project that matters to you, because it's a creative thing, and we're flighty people at the best mm. of times. Yeah. And it, so it matters to you. It's your baby, say. And you do a deal because so someone will publish it and whatnot, uh, and they're your friends, but they own a company or they run a company or they work for the company. That's nice. But you need, so you need to forget that they're your friend. Because that's not who you're doing that deal with. And I learned this the very hard way in that even if they own the company, uh, they can always sell it. But that sure. contract is with that company, not with the person. And I guess uh, you could tell me, I don't know, can I legally, because I'd like to do it in the future, make contracts dependent upon certain people. Because uh, that would be because that's what matters is human connection ultimately. So you can. I mean, you, you unfortunately, I don't think any company would sign it. It's it's no, you because they know. Want, but I <laughs> know. But yeah, so it's like I've done deals with companies that then go on to be owned and run by completely different mm -hmm. things and people that I may even disagree with or be uncomfortable with, and and then all the staff may change. So here I am with a project that is my life. Well, a, a chunk of my life and something that still means something to me and something I potentially can vi viably do financially um, mm -hmm. later on or, or do more of or something like that. But to them, it's just an old contract and mm -hmm. I'm stuck with it and I can't do anything or something like that. I'm not going to go into specifics, but mm -hmm. yeah, you've got to always be mindful. Like, don't do any favors for anyone that represents a corporation. Mm hmm it's not yeah. about that person. It's not them. It's the corporation is, will be eternal and will always change. And they could, you know, they're bipolar. Treat them like they're bipolar. They'll, they'll have a personality one, one year and someone else might buy them and they'll have a very different personality the next year or different staff, say. Well, so, yeah, you, the, the yeah. company exists to serve the corporation, not, not you. And yeah. it, it really couldn't function, I mean, in, in many different ways. It's, it's, its interest is its own self-survival which will put it at odds with, you know, even close friends very quickly. Yeah. Well, corporations are ultimately, we're all psychopathic to a small degree, but corporations are ultimately psychopathic in that they only really should care about profit. Right. Whether it's profit long-term or short-term, you know, if they'd be nice to you in the short-term to get the long-term because they know keeping you happy, you know, with a lot of money is good, that's great. But yeah, but yeah they're always looking out for themselves and so should we. So there, there were a lot of people, I, I think, what was it like when Paul Levitz was uh, at DC, uh, there were a lot more courtesy checks going around to people when they oh, used their... He was one of the good ones, yeah. Yeah, yeah when they used their stuff in the movies and TV shows, and all that kind of started to dry up once uh, once he was out. So, so yeah, you never know. Uh, but he, he was also, I mean, besides that being a good, nice thing, obviously, yeah. ethically... He knew that keeping, I mean, it's a PR, it's a basic PR thing. It's exactly. keeping people on Absolutely. side. It's like it's good business anyway because it makes you more money or stops you losing money. So it's, yeah. I remember talking to you about this last year. Um, it was, I mean, in, in the like a what if scenario. So, what if uh, when Todd McFarlane and the original Bloody Image guys were Marvel, if basically they had decided to double Todd's page rate when he kind of made some noise about it? He, there's a there's a pretty reasonable chance Marvel would not have or sorry the, the those image guys Todd in particular wouldn't have left Marvel and he was was it Todd because he was like the main instigator wasn't he, he was he yeah was. he was kind of he, he was like the control control better. better yeah yeah was it I, I watched the documentary mm -hmm. image because um, the image one yeah but, uh, was it just about money for him or was it about more control and stopping him doing what he wanted to do with the stuff like he it wanted was, to be his own boss that way yeah he he did but I think you could have Again, if, if there's a world where you could have said, all right, I know you want more control. We can give you a little bit of that, what you're asking for, but we'll also triple your check. You know, whatever. Just, just you, you, you're it. right. They were very short-sighted. Yeah. And but he, he would have yeah. stayed. Um, he, I don't know. He'd be maybe the one. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I've got to watch the, the documentary. He's the one I feel like that wouldn't, that the rest probably would potentially. Like Jim Lee, if he doubled his page rate back then, he probably would have, he would have been happy. Yeah, well, he I, was I, relatively happy anyway, but he was happy to also jump on a new thing because it could have meant 
I don't know. It's, very, it's hard to say, but it is that you can make decisions as a corporation. I mean, there's there's a lot of these decisions that are very quick. Um, Todd may have left in the end anyway, but he also may have left two, three years later. The moment would have been very different because trying to start that up in you know the mid to late '90s probably would have been yeah. a lot tougher. I mean, there, there's a lot of ways this could have played out, but. Well, a lot of the best innovations in history have come from someone saying no to someone. Yeah. And then the fire of like, well, fuck you, I'm going to do it. And fuck you, you have a look. Yes. Yeah. I well, definitely had that. So, yeah. There, there's certainly things that seem like they would be pretty small that would keep a lot. Like if, if people had anywhere from like, like a, a 2% stake in in some of these characters, that I, I think the the amount of people you would get who would be more willing to stay at, sure. on the off chance that a character like Venom, they have like a 2% stake in if, you know, they make movies and stuff versus nothing, I, I think it is just, it's just huge. I think, I think you just hit the nail on the head about how capitalism is meant to work, where you're yeah. actually invested in your own work. It <laughs> 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 would be nice. You know, if, yeah. I mean, that's what stock options are really, isn't it? That's exactly right. right. Yeah. But if I wish everyone could have a stake in their own work. So like yeah. I means technically if you're getting if you're an employee of any kind, mm -hmm. you are literally being paid to make more money for someone else than they're actually paying you. Otherwise yeah. there would be no job there. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's always nicer if like uh, I know there's a bunch of companies I forget what the the term for them they're called. I know there's one in Canada that closed or sold recently, but mm -hmm. everyone had equity in the company mm -hmm. itself, even if you were working. Mm -hmm. so I like that. I mean yeah. It yeah. makes for better people, happier people, maybe more money, I assume. But either way, it's like it's yeah. nice to have a stake in something because you care more. Well, it's it's been the nature of, of kind of this area we live in, of, of this uh, the startup community that puts equity into into companies. And this is how tech grew, is you had a bunch of people who, who own some of the company. And two years later, it spins off. They make a lot of money. They go and sink that money and do it again. And it's it's I, I do think that there's a, an aspect of comics that would get a lot healthier if suddenly that feeling of ownership was there but yeah mm -hmm. well, this is why mostly i do creator own work i mean yeah exactly well, I care if, about my work if i'm yeah. just being paid flat out but it's not the same it's it's like yeah. i i will promote something more if i'm if it's my thing obviously yeah yeah well and, anyone uh, would <laughs> yes of course yeah i mean one I thing do. you know people complain about recycling old events and in, in like the mainstream big two comics but on the other hand of that it's like why should these people give them new ideas that they're just going to yeah. make into movies and maybe they'll get a, a cameo in a movie uh, <laughs> and, and that's the best case scenario instead of saving that work for uh, something they do creator-owned? Yeah, I mean, there's a reason why, when, not to go back to Hollywood stuff, but like when people get big enough or talented enough, shall we say, and they haven't acknowledged that they're a hot property, you know, actor-wise or whoever, they, they get to ask for percentages on how the movie does and stuff. Yeah. So not yeah. only do they share the risk, they have to make the movie, ideally for them, but, you know, they get the reward. And But that's how you have to buy people now, uh, if you want loyalty of some kind and passion. So, yeah. There you go. Yeah. You, you need to make the, the motivations line up. It's an interesting. Absolutely. Uh, it, kind of a silly question to you. If, 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 um, Let's see. I hear. I'll set up this crazy scenario. Let's say Marvel or DC does come to you and says, <laughs> "Come on in." Marvel never will, man. I think I pissed them off a long time ago. <laughs> well, I don't know any yeah. editors anyway. So you okay. can kill off any of our characters. Who, who, who are you? What product are you taking? Where you're gonna kill them off? You're gonna end some character. Who, who would you want to? Oh, go you just want more content for another. You want some angry responses, don't you? No, <laughs> no, no. You don't, you don't get me into. Wait. So what is the 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 question is? You, you, you come in, you've got a free slate to do whatever you want with those those books. But you're going to come in, you're going to do it your way. You're going to make... I have a free make, slate. Yeah, clean, clean slate. Well, I don't what have to kill anyone. Well, okay, you don't have to kill them. Let's say, okay, well, we'll take that off the table. You tell me. I mean... You're just going to come in and do something completely... You, you know, you, you don't need to worry about any consequences to anything you're doing. What, what, do you, what do you do? Well, the problem... I mean, first off, killing anyone doesn't matter anymore because in comics, <laughs> they come back. That's what <laughs> that's that's what to my question, yes. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what, does I get a, on one book or a, or a range of the... You I, pick. <laughs> you pick. You can I do mean, I just, I would just want to do one book. Yeah. Uh, I said, no, someone actually wanted to have a, uh, this is going to sound horribly egotistical, but at one point, someone wanted to have a, suggested a Ben Temple Smith Presents sort of line of comics at one point. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, no, please, no. 
I'm not, no, I'm one, I'm not that good that way. And e ego wise, that would be no, That'd but, be incredible, uh, but okay. I don't know. No, it was it was a producer kind of guy. So it was, oh, okay. it was like, no, no, it's not my style. I'm not a Hollywood. No, and I'm not Stan Lee. So uh, it was a moment in time sort of okay. thing. Um, well, so you're just saying, what book do I want to do, really, aren't you? Yeah, yeah but I mean, I mean, but I guess where I have editorial control, or where you have editorial control. Now, now you're going to, you're, you're not like a dream project with some character, but you're like, I could do a really unique thing there. Well, I'm not saying uh, I'd be any good at it necessarily but i would like to have fun with and and do it myself and like do a new version maybe mm -hmm. uh ghost rider i okay. guess ghost Rider, because there's been a lot of okay. attempts at him and changes with him and i'm like i'm not really a fan of most of them mm -hmm. i like i grew up with mark texiera with the, the that 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 version yeah which i like but he can still be updated oh and ashley wood on ghost rider 2099 so sure. which i like you know with its cyberpunky kind of way but um no but i mean you asked me to reinvent a corporate property for for a corporation. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it's much closer to everything we just were talking about. What's my I get five percent for five percent. I'll make it my. I'll make a make it the way I would do it. Yeah, yeah very yeah. very. They they should let Aunt May die already. Let that poor woman die. She is old and suffering, and they kill her off and bring her back so many times. Just let Aunt May die. No, we just bring Uncle Ben back properly. Yeah, there you go. They could be swap. much happier if you know he's Viagra exists now, so they'll be happy. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 what they do. They kill her and they bring him back. They do they kind of switch. Well, they yeah, they just rotate everyone that way. So, how did how was Gotham by Midnight? Do you you worked on that? How how was that experience? Of which one, sorry, In Gotham by Midnight. Oh, that was cool. Yeah, that all happened because of uh, Ray Fawkes. Uh, yes. I'm, I'm assuming he brought my name up and got me on the books. So that was my only. Uh, DC number one, but I've done one. That was good. Yep. Um, there you go. It was weird though, because I guess the thing with publishers is I had a contract for, I think it was four or five issues. So I said, we would like you to do this. this. And um, they obviously in their marketing and promotion, they don't tell the world that. Right. So I did my job. Um, I didn't know if I, anything more would happen, but I knew they had another guy coming on after that. You know, I don't know how these things normally work, but I just had my contract, did that and yeah. had plans for after that of what I was going to do anyway. But then the world just thought like, Oh, you were taken off the book. Why did you leave? And I was like, I, I, I just did my job. I, I, I wasn't kicked off. I, I didn't, I didn't decide to leave. I just did what I was told to do and asked to do. And that was yeah. it. That's a contract. It's like, I guess unless you're, I mean, I don't know how much you could probably tell me more about the inner workings of lifetime corporate um, comic people. Like, well, I mean, I mean, I'm sure Murphy know, Sean knows about this stuff. I mean, he has a whole line though. It's, he's got a much bigger deal. But like, yeah, I'll just come in, do my the issues I was asked to do, and then leave. So yeah, the, both the money. big two are are pretty infamous for doing things that the public would be fine with, or at least understand. But saying like, oh, you can't tell anybody anything that's happening. Yeah. And it happens yeah. all the time. I know a lot of stuff that's going on now where, you know, a lot of frustrated people who are like, I wish I could tell someone that this is a mini series and not an ongoing. I wish I could tell someone that, you know, yeah, this is if they're sort of being brutally honest with themselves yeah. and if they they're guessing their numbers and stuff like that. But I think the other thing is in the the, the main the main outlook that creative people forget well, need to remind themselves a lot more of to do with publishers. And we're talking about the corporate, well, they're all, corporate, yeah. they're all corporations, but should we say the legacy large ones, mm -hmm. should we say names un unnamed? Um, it's their, their IP is what is the moneymaker. They're not concerned with the creative teams. They are in a sense of sales, ideally, but they don't give a shit if they change the artist every now and again. Or well, they, in fact, want that because... It's the character they want people to get hooked on, obviously, right. for their business reasons. But also, yeah. they don't want, I think, not that there's a conspiracy about it, but they don't want a new image coming up. They don't want consistent creative teams on books for long, long terms. They build familiarity and build their own fan base that way. It's much. I think it's much harder to do that now. Yeah. And it's we to have more success at that than, than artists because we're getting shoved around a lot. I don't think it's all deadlines. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think that someone like Sean Gordon-Murphy who's got his own universe of this thing now. So like he's done it in a good way 
that's building for the future, but he's still doing it within the, the corporate structure, which is yeah, going it's very unique. Yeah. Though. I mean, there's just not a lot of the, of that out there, unfortunately. It's it's just all very weird because they're all shooting themselves in, in the foot mostly because they're not doing that. They're well, it's hard to find a book that Nardis is on it for more than three or four consecutive issues yeah. uh, that they're not rotating things, and then you you look and either the old classics are outselling in the aftermarket in the trades, or you have things like three jokers and stuff like that, that are recent, but it's the same artist and writer on the book. And you it's like movies, man. Yeah. Movies. And yeah. Movies that change director halfway through. Not usually. A very good <laughs> yeah. We've seen some examples yeah. of that. It yeah. doesn't work out too well. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. should have some consistency there. I think people like that. And it, it also like, again, with the Japanese stuff and you're talking about, Maybe their long 50 issue, whatever episode things that they still have an end. You tell me, are they usually the same creative team? Oh, I mean, even if there are a group of them, because I know they work yeah. that way sometimes. Yeah, it's, like it's consistent. It's, it's absolutely, uh, you know, art changes midstream are disastrous. That there's much less yeah. tolerance for it. It doesn't happen very often. And when it does, it's brutalized. I mean, people, yeah. it's the, and, and the, the customer base seems to be more, um, uh, definitely more accepting if the artist gets behind or there's a tragedy or something happens um, and the book goes on hiatus for a month or a year, whatever it happens to be um, that people are, they would be ha They're happier to wait than see some other kind of thing go on. And, and like saga would be a, hopefully a, an example okay. of that in, yeah, I just, yeah. I think the publishers are shooting themselves in the foot sometimes where they, they forget that, an audience, while they do like the character, yes, and they'll possibly read it no matter who does it, which mm -hmm. is a big yeah. factor for that a lot of creators possibly don't realize and have some mm -hmm. uh, come to Jesus moments after a while. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Or have done. Not all do. I mean, some transcend that, absolutely. Like Donny Cates, man. Holy shit. Yeah. Um, Just pulled off. Uh, I hear he's selling millions now, so I don't know. <laughs> I need <laughs> to read one of these. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I also have a habit of meeting and almost or working with people before they're huge. So, mm -hmm. Matt Fraction, Donny Cates. Yeah, that's true. Uh, you, did, you did work with Matt Fraction. Yeah, before he was Matt Fraction. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I met Donny over a weekend do, teaching some comic stuff before I knew who he was. I mean, I obviously knew after that, but not before he was big. Yeah. But, um, no, I mean, it's... Yeah, whatever you said, I agree. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's I like... Uh, a character like Batman has decades and decades and decades of history. And the reality is as much as, you know, certain creators can come on and do runs that people like, you can move creators in and out. Batman is going to be the draw because it's had 80 years plus of, of establishing itself. Yeah. But right now the game is how do we get some new properties going? And when you're trying to get a new property going, shuffling the artist and the creative team, every four issues is, is not going to work. That's not the game anymore. You, you don't have that. 60 years, 80 years, whatever it happens to be to lean back on. You've got to establish yeah. it. And you also don't really have the numbers easily to keep it going yeah. more than a few issues. Obviously. Well, not with their overheads, I guess. Yeah. It's, it, I, I, it is much tougher for, for the corporates to create new things, let alone have them be accepted. Yeah. Because I get that, you know, if you're a creative person and you're creating a new Marvel character or DC, and you think it's cool. Well, why wouldn't you? I mean, especially with creator own now being the way it is and has been for a while. Why wouldn't you save that for your own thing? Yeah, you know, there, there's no way it could fit outside of Marvel DC. So it's like, yeah. why would you give them your best? Yeah. So I don't know, man. Yeah. It's, it's upside down. <laughs> it's just the dynamics of capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, we've taken a good amount of your time. So I want to be respectful of that. But uh, I don't mind. It's. Oh, uh, yeah. Where, where is so, that bit out. I, I'm very busy. I am very busy, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are very busy. You got to so you have some other projects coming out that, yeah. that are coming up, and, and you mentioned the Patreon. But what what can people afford to? Oh God, I hate being a salesman like that. Oh, well, yeah, I'm not going to slip into that uh, that mode. But like, I will be. I will tell you straight. Uh, yeah. Actually, I don't know why you wanted to do this today. It's not because I had a book come out today, right? <laughs> It may have been. Talk about, let's talk about that book. Uh, <laughs> um, well, I did a book called Fish Kill with uh, a guy named Dan Fogler. Mm -hmm. I never asked him if it's Fogler or Fogler. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. uh, he was in Fantastic Beasts and The Walking Dead. He's an actor, 
been in a yes. few things. He's also written comics for a long time. He's done a few. Um, we talked for years about doing something and something eventually came up that, that uh, he could get financing for. Yeah. So I did it, and uh, the collected edition of Fishkill comes out uh, today. And it's sort of a conspiracy-type drug-fueled mess of terrorism and uh, and hallucination. Uh, it's a very interesting book, uh, quite bloody and gory in scenes. Yeah. And yeah. also very it, – it's about New York after a yeah. terror attack, uh, and he's from New York, so he, you know, I had to try and match his uh, feels for the, the whole thing. And that's from uh, Heavy Metal. Or yes, Simon, yes. And Simon and Schuster distribution, yes. um, like fancy yeah. people. So, uh, yeah, and uh, I do my free. I do a free web comic, uh, tailor made for Instagram currently. So, oh, I need enough. to put on tapas, and uh, that's an experiment of just giving it away for free. But go. then I will also make a book, and see if anyone wants to buy the book. Because uh, I've wanted to do. I should. I forget. People are not me, and they don't know it. I do a book called Ernak. It's with double K at the end. And if you type it into Google, it will try to autocorrect you to urinal. Mm, Great perfect. name, I've discovered. That's some um, cross branding for you. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, it was, I, I didn't realize that until it was too late. So, but yeah. no, well, um, because I'll never get to do Conan, Conan stuff. I love the whole swords and sorcery thing. So I just wanted to make a, an on, not ongoing in a true sense. Each story will be its own story, but then the yeah. character will just go on and explore another part of this fantasy world I've created. It's, He's a bit of a barbarian, but he's not Conan, but he's kind of like Conan, but he's a little more sarcastic. Nice. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. And I've got to start up. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm due to start a, a, a thing that will probably get some attention and may get me cancelled at some point, but I'm not going to say anything about that yet. So. Oh, excellent. Yeah. things. Yeah, we'll see about that one. Um, and my own thing with Patreon, I have a new project, uh, literally, that only they will see, and then I'll be printing books of that eventually. Um before I ever collect it, and maybe the world sees it. So, nice. do you I have a lot going on? But yeah, you do. Do you have a favorite? Uh, you, you push some stuff out through Image, through IDW, through others. Do you have a favorite vehicle? In in you know, when it is creator owned, do you, do, is there one yeah. that works better than others? Hmm? Oh, Image is okay. Well, I would love to hear people disagree with me or explain why Image is not the only place you should try to get it. Well, at least the place you should try to to do something with first. Yeah. Sure. It may not be the best if it's your first comic because there's things to learn about doing comics and how processes work and pre Because Image kind of are a little more hands off or have been historically. Yeah. I mean, that the hard way to yeah, yeah. But they give you the tools to be the master of mistress of your own destiny. Yeah. So, they, I mean, you own it. The only thing they, they own is the eye. I mean, except yeah. Skybound, which is its own deal, and, there's, you know, the other satellite companies. But yeah. The image is the best, and hopefully I'll have a few things out from them. Well, that's uh, ideally, eventually, when things go mass market, that's where I'll put stuff out. So I just have a whole backlog of stuff. I've been gone that's for great. a few years. Excellent. Kind of gone. But yeah, I'm around. I'm around. And are I'm you around. looking? Uh, are you looking forward to getting back to cons, or how, how is that? How's uh, it? Been? Yeah, I am actually. Okay. The, uh, not all cons are the same. Not all cons are equal, but. Um, Assuming they're anything like they used to be, uh, yes, it, it's a good way to connect and also turn some people into fans. So I mean, it happens. It's it's a part of that whole experience thing. Yeah. So I mean, you, yes. doing it online is is one thing, but nothing still replaces the human connection to a degree. Yeah. And them seeing you in person and now I have actual conversations at the table, and you'll have to get me to shut up as you have seen here. <laughs> but no, it's like it's a whole thing. Even if there's a line, I give each person at least five minutes. I try. That's all. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So we yeah, have, yeah, we we maybe have Emerald City Comic Con here in at the end of the year. Do you think you might uh, you might go to that one? Even if I'm not living here, I will definitely try to be at that show. Yeah, nice. if, yeah, that is it's one of my favorite shows. It's okay, a bit for the, maybe for the worst, but that's uh, not to do with that's to do with the city as a whole. But but uh, and and I, well, they they put everyone up on the top floor. Yeah. In the artist alley, so but there's not as much sign. That's a not much signage for it, but that's another little not annoying thing. It's a great show, so yes, I will be there. It's fun, okay. C two E two and New York as well, probably. Awesome, so, ideally. Well, yeah. I, I look forward to catching up with you there. I, we'll have to if you're if you're maybe. yeah if you do well, come before that, maybe. Yeah, maybe if things are healthy, who knows? Oh, yeah, we'll see. 
the world's a mess. But um, no, okay. So we'll have to get some scotch with uh, with you and and Sean and a couple of other people come to Seattle and I'll do that. Get away together. That'd be a good time. Yeah. Uh, well, I've only I've only briefly chatted to Sean. I like Sean. I like his style. He's. I bought two pages of his early Hellblazer work many years nice. ago. Yeah, right. and they'd be worth a bit by now, I think. Uh-huh. I can't find them. I don't know where they are. Oh, so, that money's in there somewhere. So I just have to get them to redraw them. So like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that'd be awesome. Just, I, I always get very little girly and shy when, when people I admire actually say, oh, I'm even aware of your work, let alone like it. It's like that. So. Well, I, I think the in I don't know what one of the interviews with Sean he talked about how much he liked your work so now it's it's crossed over with yeah. like yeah I just popped into the the chat thing and like oh shit that's nice yeah yeah no I love his work so well very good nice. well I, I hope we can see you soon and definitely we'll pick up the stuff and if people who are listening to this you should go and check out the Patreon and and subscribe over there and, and give yeah. your money to Ben for sure and yeah, give give it a look give it a look two bucks get you everything that I do kind of. Uh, all the bits and bobs and things. So, like, you don't have to invest much just to check it out. And there's a whole back cat- back, back catalog <clears throat> of PDF of, every, of the finished products of everything I've done, if nothing else. So, nice. like, yeah, I'm building up a whole backlog there. So, I love it. I know that's awesome. it's, it's it's great. Great, so to speak. So, yeah. Well, well, thanks, well, thanks for having me, guys. It was a lot. Yeah, of fun. thanks yeah. for great. talking with us. We really appreciate it. And uh, like I said, I hope to run into you soon, and we'll we'll keep following you and. Yeah, keep doing what you're doing. My speech impediment was okay. No, you were. Yeah, it was fine. I think most <laughs> uh, people understand it. And it's out too thick. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much. We'll talk. Hey, to you're soon. welcome. Thank you. Yeah.